what attracted me to this story. I was completely and utterly um, swept up in trying to understand the reason that this man, King Edward VIII, would give up the throne um, for the woman he loved, for Wallace Simpson, why he would relinquish this great position of power for love. I, I wanted to get to the bottom of it. I wanted to investigate. I wanted to find out why. That was my original attraction. So, would I ever give up my throne for a man or a woman? Um, I think I can have both. <laughs> or, or all three. <laughs> Anyways, next question. Well, first of all, I had to write the script, and that required an enormous amount of research that took me several years. I worked with Alec Kashishin on the screenplay, and I would say in total, um, the research and the writing took three years. Then I had to assemble a cast, which I was able to do, and I'm surrounded by my most talented, magnificent cast. And then a great production team, and I was lucky to have that as well. Um, so that's how I did it, in a nutshell. Follow Sounds easy, but it wasn't. <laughs> The thing about the Duke and the Duchess, or the world of King Edward VIII, and um, the world that Wallace Simpson found herself in, is that it was a world of luxury, and beauty, and decadence to a certain extent. And I wanted to reflect that world visually in my film. And also, uh, once again, in the modern day story, um, there, 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 this, is, this is also an environment, uh, or a world of, of um, of decadence and and beauty and glamour and people who breathe a rarefied air and so I needed to reflect that visually in the film and also to make the point that no matter how beautiful and glamorous your surroundings it doesn't mean that you're going to be there's no guarantee for happiness um, I've always loved film all my life I've been a, a, a film lover um, as a young child, I was always influenced and inspired by movies. And I think I've always had it in the back of my mind that I wanted to make one. So, needless to say, I see myself as a storyteller. So I don't think it's such a big jump to go from songwriting um, to making films. Because in the end, we're all telling stories. Um, and I was obviously attracted, I am and was attracted to very creative people, which is why I married Sean Penn and Guy Ritchie, two very talented directors. Um, and they both encouraged me as a director. It's important to understand that it is my point of view after digesting all the information and doing all the years of research that I did. Um, and I wanted the movie to have a point of view uh, so I created the modern day story um, of Wally uh, that Abby plays and it, essentially the Duchess's story is told through the eyes of Wally um, only to emphasize further the point that truth is subjective and that we you know depending on where we're standing and depending on who we are and what life experiences we've we've had we are going to experience that story in a different way and it's going to mean something different to each and every one of us so that's important to know. I identified with her in that I think it's, it's very common when people become celebrities or public figures or icons that, that, that we are often reduced to a sound bite and that um, you're given a few uh, attributes and then you're not allowed to have anything more than that. Um, I think that Wallace Simpson was much aligned in the history books I think people didn't understand the choice that the king made um, to give up this position, and I think it, you know, it sent, it changed English history. It changed the history of the world in many ways. Um, so often people greet unfamiliar circumstances with fear, and I think people tried to um, diminish her as a human being um, because they didn't understand this choice that he would make. And it was important to me not to make her a saint, 
by any stretch of the imagination because I don't think she was. What I think she was was, is, was a human being and I tried to portray her and everyone else in the story as a human being. And that was important to me. I think that there was obviously some kind of subconscious attraction to her. Um, I did go through periods of feeling like I was an outsider when I first moved to England. I certainly didn't feel like that by the time I lived there for 10 years. Um, but I think one always feels like that when one moves to a different country. And I feel, since I moved there, that um, I feel very welcomed by, by England. And I feel that they were very supportive of me um, in making this film. Before I saw it, I was a little bit nervous because, because I thought, oh dear, if someone else is making a movie about the same time frame, then who would be interested in my movie? But then I saw the film, and I saw that it was from a completely different point of view. And um, I view the success of that film as sort of laying the groundwork for, for my movie. And when I saw Tom Hooper at a party recently, I thanked him profusely for um, setting up my movie. Um, because now people have a reference point and when they watch my movie they say, oh right, that's, that's that person and that's, that's Bertie, that's Elizabeth, that's, that's Wallace Simpson, that's the brother, etc., etc. And so there's a little bit of history and a little bit of knowledge and we're not starting with a blank slate. Obviously as a woman, having a child, um, a procreation um, is, is a big part of our, of our the desire to have a child is a big part of our DNA, our molecular structure. It's a big part of what we are um, raised to believe defines our character. Um, and also, obviously, there's a lot of symbolism in, in motherhood, you know, bringing new life into the world. Uh, I think there are many ways to bring life into the world. I think that having a child is one of the biggest ones. And obviously, it's very important to me. I do believe that um, Wallace Simpson did want to have a child and wasn't successful in that area and felt a sense of regret about that. And I believe that Wally's desire, the modern day character to have a child, is also comes from a deep sense of, of wanting to be a creator, to create something. And that is what we are lucky enough to do as women. So. It's a big part of my story, yes. I couldn't give you a percentage of how personal the movie is. I think that because I wrote it, and I think with all the things that I do, there's a part of me in everything. So um, to say this person's me or this situation is me would, would be unfair. I think artists don't create in a very conscious way of what is personal and what isn't. You just become a channel and things flow through you and you take, you know, and what comes out of you is obviously has the residue of your personal experience, but it is also um, soaking up the world around you and, and all of my influences since, I, since I've been making art.